Hey, this is Ben with the Liver Team. Hi there, I'm over at Kleintown Hospital and we've got a patient that we'd like to transfer over to your hospital. Oh, okay, can you tell me a little bit more about what's going on? Well, she has cirrhosis and she's going into kidney failure from hepatorenal syndrome. Oh, okay. We don't have any liver specialists here, so we'd like to transfer her. Okay, sure, but let me get a little bit more information first. How do you know she has hepatorenal syndrome? Well, um... Like, did you do any urine studies, for example? Oh yeah, of course, we did a urinalysis. It shows turbid urine with high urobilinogen and, uh... How do you diagnose hepatorenal syndrome? You know, you can just go ahead and transfer the patient. Okay, thanks. So what is hepatorenal syndrome? We call it HRS for short. It's a complication that can develop from cirrhosis of the liver. You develop a rapid failure of the kidneys, but the tricky part is there's not actually anything wrong with your kidneys. It's not a kidney problem, it's a plumbing problem, and it's all caused by the liver. When you have liver cirrhosis, you get scarring of the liver, and that makes it hard for blood to pass through the liver. So in response, your body tries to create more blood vessels and dilate other blood vessels to get more blood. But the problem with this is that means the kidneys don't get the blood volume that they need. Just think, if you dilate a pipe, for example, then the flow through that pipe is gonna be slower. If the kidneys don't get the blood flow that they need, then that's gonna cause damage to the kidney. And after enough time, they'll start to fail. So how do we diagnose it? First, the patient has to have cirrhosis. Second, they have to have signs of kidney injury. Third, they have to have had normal kidneys before all of this happened. HRS is an acute process. That also means there shouldn't be any signs of damage to the kidneys. We then check the urine sodium because if that's low, that means the kidneys are working properly because they're trying to save sodium, pulling it out of your urine and back into your blood because that'll pull more water into the blood and hopefully increase the blood volume and get more blood to the kidneys. The kidneys are trying to save themselves. If the kidneys are directly damaged from like a medicine or an infection, then they're not gonna be doing their job properly and they're gonna let more sodium spill into the urine, causing a high urine sodium. So does that mean that everyone with liver disease, kidney injury, and a low urine sodium has HRS? No, because someone who's just dehydrated could have those same findings. So how do we differentiate? We give someone like that fluids. We give them fluids for one to two days, and if they have no improvement in their kidney injury, that means they probably have HRS. So once we diagnose HRS, how do we treat it? We can use some medicines to try to increase the blood flow to the kidney, because remember, the problem is just the plumbing. It's nothing wrong with the kidneys themselves. These medicines are called octreotide and midodrine, but really they're just temporizing measures, band-aids. The real treatment is a liver transplant, because remember, the liver is the root of all of this. So if you get a new liver, it's not going to have scarring, you won't have dilated blood vessels, and you won't have decreased blood volume going to your kidneys, and your kidneys will start working properly again.